Okay. Let's do something fun. Here's a tube. It's an aluminum, aluminum tube. And if I stare down, I think Kevin can see that there's nothing in there, right? It's completely hollow? Okay, absolutely nothing. All right. Nothing up my sleeve. And I have here two objects. And what they actually are, they're just pieces of metal that are kind of encased in plastic to protect them. But one of them is just a piece of aluminum. And if I stick it to the, the steel behind the board, nothing happens. The other one's actually a bar magnet. Okay, so if I place it here, it'll stick to the, be attracted to the steel behind the whiteboard. And they're both the same radius, right? They both kind of look exactly the same, no difference. And they both kind of fit in here, right? There's nothing going to block them if I drop them through. Okay. So which one was the aluminum again? This is the bar magnet. That's the bar magnet. I'll keep it there. Let me take the aluminum, the non-magnetic uh, object here, and I drop it through the tube, and it falls through the tube. That's pretty exciting, right? That's pretty amazing. Let's just do that one more time. Okay. And if I were to not have the tube here, it should fall at the same rate, right? So, okay. So nothing, nothing particularly spectacular is going on there. Let's take the magnet. Now, if I drop the magnet without the tube, it should fall. I really shouldn't do that, too, because you can destroy a magnet that way. You can demagnetize it. But fortunately, we have these little metal protectors. But if I drop it through the tube, whoa, um, um, uh, there, there it is. Can everybody see that? Try it one more time. So here's the tube. And I put the magnet in the tube, and it's falling, apparently. I think so. And, and then finally it comes out. And now I can't remember which way I dropped this, but I can orient it any either way. Re you can reverse the magnet 180 degrees, and the same thing seems to happen. So what's going on there? Why in the world, when I drop a bar magnet through the tube, does it seem to fall at a very slow rate compared to just dropping an ordinary piece of aluminum? Okay, there's a, okay so we would assume that there's got to be a significant force pushing upward, right? In, in the first case, there's just the gravitational force, assuming low air resistance, and it just falls according to acceleration due to gravity, right? So clearly the acceleration is low, and in fact, it's almost a constant velocity. Once it's getting, once it, I have it going, it's hard to tell, of course, but you can kind of hear it. You can kind of hear it moving at almost a constant velocity. It doesn't, until it you know, reaches the end of the tube, it hardly accelerates at all. So there must be a force upward balancing that gravitational force downward, okay? So the question is, where's that force coming from? Yeah, question, yeah. The tube is not magnetic. It's purely just aluminum. So there's a, so it's it's a metal, but there's nothing ferromagnetic about the, the tube itself. Okay, I heard the word current. Where would a current be coming from? Oh, the current's co coming from the exterior shell. Why would there be a current in this tube? I'm not hooking up to a battery or anything. Okay, you said motional EMF. Uh, let's be a little bit careful. We have a, um, in motional EMF, we, we have a, a situation where there is a piece of metal through, moving through a constant magnetic field. Okay, but in this case, if I hold the tube steady, the metal isn't moving. Instead, what is happening? The magnetic field is changing because as the tube moves, there is a magnetic field produced, or excuse me, as the uh, bar magnet moves, there is a magnetic field that's created by the bar magnet in the presence of the tube, and it's changing. Okay, so it's possible we could get some currents to actually result from this. And they said, well, okay, we get some currents to result. 
what could those currents in turn do? Create another magnetic field which could actually cause magnetic forces. Okay? Let's actually step through it and see if we can kind of understand at least qualitatively what's going on. Let's skip these questions here. So here's our bar magnet. And let's say we drop it where the north pole is uh, pointing down, south is up. I want you to just focus on the top, just at the sort of top edge of the ring of the, of the tube here. And uh, we say, consider a circular path around the tube above the falling bar magnet. What's the direction of negative d, b, d, t? Okay, so positive y is upward, po negative y is downward, or is it a zero magnitude? Now, you have to be a bit careful with the geometry. So I would suggest drawing a picture, uh, drawing, again, initial and final magnetic fields, and see if you can figure out the direction of negative dB dt. Okay, we have two-thirds, well, two-thirds, one-third. Let's see if we can get this. We have the... Um, we're looking at the flux through the top edge of the tube, right? So we want to draw the initial and final magnetic fields. And we have the initial magnetic field pointing in what direction? Down, okay, toward the south pole. And what happens to it? It, it decreases because the, the magnets fall, uh, falling, getting farther away from this observation location. So B final is down but smaller. Delta B is pointing up, so negative dBdt points down. Negative dBdt points down. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Just getting the direction of negative dBdt? Okay. Let's, next question. If we know now negative dBdt at the top, what's the direction of the conventional current as seen from above? So imagine you're now standing above looking down on the tube, from that point of view, what's the direction of the conventional current that's induced? Looking down from above, you're going to get a counterclockwise uh, magnetic field, just pointing your thumb or your right hand into that direction, and your fingers curl around in that direction. So we're going to get a conventional current. Sorry, did I say magnetic field? I meant electric field. Counterclockwise uh, electric field, and therefore counterclockwise uh, conventional current. Clockwise? Yeah, clockwise. What, I, what was this again? Sorry. Answer one, clockwise. Okay, we're good. All right. Just my mistake. Sorry. Clockwise. Clockwise. Thank you. All right. So that is I. Okay. We're, we're good there. Now, that I, that conventional current, is going to do what? It's going to, if you have moving charges, they're going to create what? Moving charges do what? They're going to create a magnetic field. So think about the direction of the magnetic field at the location of the magnet due to this current in the red loop. Due, due to the current in the top uh, ridge or the top ring, what's going to be the direction of the magnetic field this current produces down here? Okay, not quite as much agreement as we would like, but if we have a, it's a little bit tricky to see here, but if you have a dipole, it's a, it's a magnetic dipole, right? You have a conventional current flowing around the clockwise direction from this point of view. So that's going to create its own magnetic field at this observation, observation location pointing uh, down, right? Okay, so this is B due to the top, say. Well, now you've got to make a little bit of an analogy to understand this. This, if you have something that's making a magnetic field pointing away from it, it kind of looks like what? In other words, where have we seen something that makes a magnetic field pointing away from it? Okay, coil or in terms, what would a, a bar magnet, what pole of a bar magnet would have to be here? A north, okay? So it's be, the top is behaving like the north pole of a bar magnet. It's creating a magnetic field pointing downward. Well, what does a north pole and a south pole do? They attract, okay? So you're going to get an attractive force push, pulling upward that's going to slow down the, the rate of the, the fall of this uh, falling bar magnet. 
And I'll leave it to you, but you could actually work out that in the bottom, you have this North Pole moving towards a ring in the bottom. You'll actually get a magnetic field. Uh, you actually get a current induced in the bottom such that it creates a magnetic field that, again, looks like a North Pole. Two North Poles do what? Repel. Okay, so from both sides, you're going to get repulsion slowing this falling bar magnet down. 